Hello there, everyone in the Project Open Mic audience. This is Andre. Thank you for joining. And this is another Andre's Mic segment. Now, I know I did that segment talking about cheating. And I wanted to follow that up. Now, firstly, before I even go to get too deep into this. I know I didn't cover everything when it comes down to cheating. I was just more or less trying to deal with more of the mental aspects and sometimes that things could be lacking in a relationship. There are other reasons that one would cheat, like past history with other partners, paranoia over certain things that may have happened in their past before, and then just comparing situations back and forth, or low self-esteem issues, again, dealing with past relationships. Sometimes that happens. Then there are the people who are just super selfish and just don't care about anybody else. And they just want what they want. Again, things happen. I'm not saying that the action itself is condonable. I'm just saying that there are reasons it happens. And sometimes the reasoning behind the action, and actually no, not sometimes. The reasoning behind an action is just as important as the action. I believe I said that in the last discussion, but I wanted to reiterate that. Sometimes you can fix the issue that's causing the problem. You just have to know what the issue is and how to fix it. And there are some people who are subconsciously trained to cheat under certain circumstances. And it might not even be something that they realize themselves. Again, I know from my own personal experience when I did it, it wasn't necessarily because it was just something I wanted to do. It was a mental thing. There was either something lacking in the relationship or something lacking in myself that I wasn't able to cope with. And that was my coping mechanism and that was the problem. I've since changed that. I can say that now. I've since changed that once I figured out what was wrong. And how to change it. It took effort. It took a lot of effort. And it took a lot of willpower to do. And that's something that is difficult. Because at that point you're changing yourself on the subconscious level. And it's not that easy. You can consciously think something. And and do it. And be happy in doing that. And you can consciously think something. And not want to do it. And be miserable about doing it. Because those things... Let's just say it this way. When your conscious and subconscious are lined up, you're happy with the action you take. When your conscious and subconscious are at odds with each other, you're usually miserable in that action. And that's the other thing I really wanted to get into, the other thing I wanted to talk about. There was this, there was a, there's a series of videos on YouTube under the uh, name Paradigm Shift. I can't remember the name of the gentleman that did the talking right now but he was talking more in line of changing things to become more successful in life and that actually those discussions are actually really good to listen to um then another person to listen to that would be really good to listen to is a speaker his name is leslie brown um i listen to some of his stuff sometimes it's really good then there's david goggins who's also very good to listen to. He's like a military guy who's like severely broken down in his life at one point, and he's made something of himself. So there are, there are good people out there to listen to and listen to discussions that they have made because you can get a lot of insight from them. But I look at the whole paradigm shift thing where you have a subconscious automatic choice in your head Based on a certain set of conditions. Because this is how your brain is trained. Like learning to walk. You have to be trained up to walk. Not only physically but mentally. You have to learn how to run. You have to learn how to jump. You have to learn how to climb. Your mind logs these things. In your subconscious. To do when the situation falls upon you. So that's why like in things with martial arts training. Where you've been trained to have a certain reaction to a certain number of, of, you've been trained to have a certain reaction to a certain action. 
and it becomes ingrained. And that's one thing that can lead to people having very fast reflexes. Reflexes, I believe, are more a subconscious than, thing than they are a conscious thing. Your reflexes are trained subconsciously. That's why they're so quick, because it's not as, it's not as much of a thought process at that point in time. And that's how I look at it. So that's why you could, in your mind, react to a thing a certain way, even if you don't mean to do it. Where you could have a negative reaction and you're sitting there thinking like, why did I do that? Why did I do I didn't really want to do that. Why did I do that? Why did this happen? And, and that, that that's a legitimate thing. Where someone will find themselves questioning why they did something when they know in their mind... There was no reason for them to do it. Or not not that there was no reason for them to do it. It it shouldn't have escalated in the way it did. Is a better way to put it. And it took me a while to start to, to do research on these things. Start discovering this stuff. To listen to different people who have had successful lives. Or people who have come from nothing into something. And there are a lot of people who lack in education who are rich wealthy and it's because of just their mental fortitude alone that got them to where they needed to be and sometimes that's just what you need you have to fix your mental fortitude you have to fix your internal coding if if that makes any sense to anybody just like in a, a video game a character model is programmed to do something based on what happens to it. That's how your mind works. Consciously, you can make choices because these are lighter choices. They, they don't weigh as heavily on you. But subconsciously, you have a particular choice and a particular reaction because of how your mind has been trained. And it takes... A lot of work to retrain the subconscious part of your mind. And sometimes when that happens, you are going to go through crap. Because in changing that mindset, you're also changing the energy about it. You're changing the energies you're putting off. And if energy A comes in contact with energy B, they're going to bounce off each other. They're not going to meld together. They're going to push against each other. It's just how things work. That's a concept that stays the same no matter where you go. Like whether you apply it to science or pseudosciences. It fits. That it, it works. That's how, that's how it always works. That's why like your subconscious mind and your conscious mind are kind of like magnets. If the poles, are, the poles don't work together, they're not going to connect. It's just how it is. Like your conscious mind... In order for you, in order for most people to be happy, your conscious mind has to flow along with your subconscious mind. That's why there can be people who can be truly, truly horrifically bad people, and they can revel in that. As horrible as that might sound, it makes sense though. Where if you you have somebody who revels in negativity and and just like these these evil things. They revel in it. They enjoy it. They find something in it that empowers them. So they benefit from it. Whereas somebody who doesn't benefit from that. That might partake in those actions. That they'll, they'll start to waste away. Part of them will... It's, it's like chipping away at yourself if you're doing something that doesn't fit with your subconscious code. And that's why you have to work to change your subconscious code to, to things that will make you happier or that will benefit you. But that, that's a process that comes with repeated action. So if you really want to change something about yourself, you have to be diligent in it. You have to be religious in it and to the point where it becomes second nature. It's not a thing that you have to think about. It just becomes part of you. And for a lot of people, that's not easy. There are some people who can make those changes right off the bat. But a lot of people, that's a, that's a difficult thing. 
change in and of itself is difficult because there's no easy way to just do it most of the time. Again, it just takes repeated action and repeated diligence. It takes it takes basically a stubborn attitude to be able to change things about yourself to fit the way that you want them to fit. And then if you do it enough, and it gets to the point where the things that you are changing are things that make you happy rather than changing the things into something that makes you unhappy or frustrated or angry. You become better in the overall. That's why I don't like the statement that cheaters can't change. You can. It's difficult. And it's even more difficult when you have people around you that feed into the negative thoughts that you're already having. Where they'll put you down because of things that you've done wrong and just hold you there. If you want somebody to be able to make a change about themselves and, again, to make a positive change for themselves, you don't hang over their head things that they may have done wrong. You don't hang over their head things that they can't change. You can't change the past. What you can do is change what the future is going to bring. You can change the actions in that moment. To change how your future is going to play out. Because you can change the path you're on. But again, it takes work. It's like being lost out in the woods. And you get stuck on a trail. And you can't see one way or the other where to go. So, either you can stay on that trail and follow it to whatever its planned destination is. Or you can try to break away from that trail and walk yourself through those woods... Getting hit with different tree branches, maybe scratching your legs and arms up on things, maybe tripping over some logs and stuff. But if you keep pushing, you'll eventually find another path. It'll just be difficult to do. It's not going to be pleasant. It's never going to be pleasant. Because there is self-doubt that that falls in. And there are so many questions and variables that will pop into your mind. Where you'll question, am I doing what needs to be done? Am I doing the thing that is best? And you'll only know that once you make it onto that other path. You'll only know if it was the right choice once you make it onto that other path. And it's going to be a struggle. There's nothing that's going to just be easy about it. It's not just going to fall into your lap and be like, hey, this is what you need. This is what was going to happen. Unfortunately, life just does not work that way. At least not for everybody. Some people, things like that happen all the time. And I think that those people are extremely blessed. And I hope that they continue to be blessed. (laughs) That's the best way I can put it. But for everyone else, things like that take time to work on. Like, you can't just... Assume that somebody is going to be able to make a change in their life because you told them to make that change. If they want to change, if they have, if the change is going to happen, it's going to be because that person wants to make that change happen. But you can't bludgeon them over the head because things don't immediately change to how you want it. Especially if you're in a relationship with someone. You're in a relationship with someone, you have to give them the opportunity and the time to grow Things are not going to happen overnight and you have to be patient. But along with that patience, you cannot, again, you can't bludgeon them over the head with what they've done wrong. You can't tell them all the time that you expect them to do more wrong. You've got to give them the space and the breathing room to go through the changes that they need to do. Because it's not just going to be easy on them to make that change. Especially if, if it's something that hurts them internally, it's not going to be easy to make that change because they're going to, that's a default fallback action for them. And they do it, oddly enough, a lot of people do bad things to protect themselves. It's not a thing of wanting to harm someone else, it's just the thing of wanting to protect themselves. But unfortunately, we don't think about 
fully, we don't think fully about how those actions are going to play out. And sometimes even when we can think about how those actions are going to play out and we know how, how a situation is going to go, we still can't fight that subconscious thought. It's there. There's nothing to stop it until we can find a way to change it. And usually you need to have your mind be able to be at peace in order to do that. You can't do it with a mind f- colluded full of chaos. It j- it's just not going to happen. So, this is why a lot of people who are wealthy, who are gen- who are in and of themselves good people that are wealthy, they will tell you that you need to get people out of your life that are going to be toxic to your life. It's something that I had to learn the hard way. And it's extremely hard, especially when that toxic person in your life is somebody you deeply care for. It gets to be super difficult because you want to keep them around, even if you can't. And again, that was something I had to learn the hard way. I wish I had learned it quicker because it would have saved me a lot of stress and a lot of my own personal issues that I've had to find difficulty in working out. But again, I know I'm on the right path now, and that's why I'm trying my best to use my experience and the things that I've gone through and things that I've dealt with and and what I'm learning now, try to use it to best help other people, to make something available for other people to be able to listen and say, I see where you're coming from, and I can see that I can do it too. There are a lot of people currently in my own personal life, who want to see me suffer. And I know they want to see me suffer. The best thing I can do for me is prove them wrong. That's my mindset right now. If you want to see me suffer, then I'm going to do everything in my power to prosper. You want to see me suffer? You want to see me out my wits? You want to see me in pain? I'm going to do everything in my power to be the complete opposite of that. And there are people who I was extremely close to at one point that have this viewpoint right now. And I know they have this viewpoint. There's nothing I can do about that other than become the success that I was meant to be. That's the best way that I can get revenge against them. As petty as that might sound. Even though that's not really what's on my mind. But that's how they'll perceive it. Is that I I just decided to just somehow find success for myself. Even though if under the right conditions these people would have left me to my own devices to do what I was, was trying to do with my life there wouldn't have been a problem in the first place. But that's a lesson that I had to learn the hard way. And that's a lesson that they'll eventually learn themselves. That you shouldn't spend your time trying to break down and hurt another person on purpose. Because you put that energy out there, you're just bringing more negative energy to yourself. And I don't want to be a part of that. I don't want to be throwing negativity and insults back and forth at people for no good reason. Like, there's a difference between, you know, being competitive with like, with, like, a sport or with me, with my love of video games, being competitive in a game and, and doing trash talking and stuff like that. That type of stuff gets me excited, gets me riled up to compete more. It makes me imp- want to improve my game and step, my, step myself up. But when there's somebody who has been in your life and they know a lot of the pains that you've gone through and they use that that weakness in you to hurt you then the best thing that you can do is prove to them that they're wrong the best thing that you can do is put forth the effort for yourself to prove them wrong that's the path that I'm on right now is to quiet down everyone who's spent their time trying to put me down 
because if they have to spend their time trying to put me down, then there must be something valuable enough about me that they don't want to see somebody else get. Or they don't want to see somebody else be able to enjoy that with me. And that's where my mind is on. That's where my thoughts have been processed. That's where I am in my life right now. It's a rebuilding phase for me, but at the same time, throughout all of this rebuilding, I'm finding that things that I used to struggle with, that I used to have a hard time with, are becoming easier because my mindset is more positive. I'm more into doing better for myself. I'm more into doing better for other people. The better, again, I'm a person that likes to help other people. So if I do good for me, that means in the long run, I'm going to be doing good for everybody else. Anyone that I, I want to help, anybody I, I care about and I want to do things for, the more I improve my own personal situation, the better I can do for them. That's how I look at it. And if I want to be able to improve the lives of the other, of other people around me, I have to improve my own life. That was my ultimate mistake. Is that I felt like I had to just push everybody else to do the best that they could for them. I never took inventory on myself. And I gave up a lot of my own personal opportunities to grow. And I I do regret it. I do regret it looking back at these things. Because I had so many opportunities that fell in my lap that I just did not take. I've had so many opportunities that fell in my lap that I didn't take. And now it's work to get to where I want to be. It's, it's going to take time. It's going to take a lot of energy. And a lot of these things I could have already accomplished in my life had I not taken a back seat on my own. Had I not given up my power as a person to help other people that didn't really care that I was becoming stagnant. That didn't care that my own personal growth stopped. That didn't care that I started regressing backwards into behaviors that I really didn't like performing. Because they could use any number of reasons to point out why I was a bad person. Why I was awful to people or or in one way, shape or another. And to say that I was horrible. All the while, they're talking about me behind my back. (laughs) Basically putting a knife, burying it deep, deep into the back of, into my back, through my chest. And I found that I have to be better for me in order to shut that all down. So, in the long run... I know I'm going to find the success that I've been putting my energy into. I know I'm going to find what I need for me to be the complete person I'm supposed to be by myself. But that doesn't mean that I'm just going to ignore the people that are standing behind me, that have helped prop me back up, that have helped me in the darkest of my hours. It's all of those people will be the people that benefit from the positive choices I'm making now. And when I do find the things in my life that bring me success, that give me what I'm looking for. And that's because I've changed my mindset from that place I was, where I was constantly negative and constantly down on myself and constantly telling myself that I'm just this garbage piece of crap of a person and that's something I've stopped doing my mindset isn't there anymore and I do still have certain stresses and certain issues that I'm working out and seeing a therapist for but in the long run I'm not going to be in that same position I was before because I've made improvements and changes in my life to fix things It's going to be harder for me to go back to that negative way of thinking. Because I'm not 
I'm not in the same environment that really perpetuated that thinking in the first place. I'm not in that same same environment. I'm not around the same people that led me to feel that way, that led me to believe that's who I was. And I'm happy I'm not. Because I see where my life is going now and I see what I have in front of me. I see the opportunities that are starting to unravel and to fall into my lap. And I see what pieces of the puzzle I need to put together in order to complete the pictures that I want to complete. And that's the whole reason for this. That's why I did the discussion about cheating and about people having emotional and mental issues that can feed into that that may be one undiagnosed and two they may not even know that they have because sometimes you you just have to research some of the things that are going on with you and maybe talk to a doctor maybe talk to a therapist or a counselor maybe again go to a church and talk to a reverend a bishop whoever somebody who can help you somebody who's a pillar in that community or even just friends, people who think things out and don't just have a reaction to certain things. Because people who want to be there for you will be there for you. If they find that you have done something wrong, yeah, they're more than likely going to tell you that they disagree with the action that you took. But they will be there for you to see you do better for yourself. They will be there to prop you up. If they feel like you're going to slip, they will push you back to your feet. Those are the people that are worth having in your life. And those are the people that you want to keep there. The people that will tell you when they see that you're messing up. But at the same time, when they see you do something great, they'll, they'll, sit, there, they'll sit back and they'll give you praise for it. Those are the type of people you want to be around. Those are the type of people you want to have in your life. Those are the type of people that you want to back you. Because at, at any point, you also want to be able to do the same for them. You want to be able to be there for them when they find their moments of growth and when they have their moments where they slip up. You want to be able to be there for them because if you do that, they'll do the same for you. People who really care about you will recognize when you have messed up, but they won't abandon you. They'll help you as long as you're willing to take the help And you actually want it. You actually want to work on the issues that you're facing. You actually want to work on the things that are paining you. You actually want to find yourself in a better position in life. Because even if they can pull you out of where you are, it's not going to make much of a difference if you jump back in there. You have to want it. You have to hunger for these things. You have to push yourself that direction. And if you don't, then it's not going to make a bit of difference who you surround yourself with because you're always going to fall back into that thing that you don't want to do. That doesn't matter if it's cheating. It doesn't matter if it's yelling and screaming at people. It doesn't matter what it is. If you you have this negative reaction to everything and all you're putting out is negative energy and all you are doing is being negative to other people, that's all you're going to get back is negativity. That's all you're going to have is negativity. If everything that comes out your mouth is something bad-mouthing somebody or shooting somebody down because you don't agree with something that they did or snickering behind somebody's back because you found out something about them that they found that's embarrassing to them or you go around talking talking trash about them and, th- <laughs> and um, well, talking trash about them and using anything that they've done possibly wrong as some sort of sign that they are a horrible person all you're going to get back is a bunch of negativity because that's all you're putting into the air that's all you're giving out that's all you have and that's exactly what's going to be attracted to you is a bunch of negative crap and it's always going to be something that hits you in the worst way possible when you least expect it to hit you and that's something that is true No matter what the situation is, that's something that's always going to be true.
but I don't want to linger on this too much longer. Again, mostly I just think that people need to spend more time being positive and you need to surround yourself with positive people, people that want to see you happy, people that want to see you improve your life, people that aren't looking for you to slip up so they have something to talk about. That's it. Thank you guys very much for listening. Keep your eyes and ears up for more stuff from me. <laughs> oh, crap. I almost forgot which channel I'm recording this for. <laughs> I mean, the discussion would have been the same anyway, but... um, <laughs> Oh, it's just peace out, everybody. Y'all just enjoy your day or night whenever you hear this. Bye. <laughs>